So, hello and welcome to our webinar today about uh, a very new planning software, what we recommend, and this is System Surveyor. My name is Thomas Gladl. I will guide you through this webinar in the next roundabout 60 minutes, and I will go from you from the very start to um, a project planning um, within this new software. Um, the webinar here is a live webinar, so you can ask your questions if you want. Yeah, we have um, here with GoToWebinar the possibility to put questions into the question box. So as soon as you have a question, feel free to ask it, and I will come back to you as soon as I see it, yeah, and we'll try to give you the right answer. In addition to this, we will, of course, also record the session. Yeah, so the session can be then reviewed on our e-learning platform. Yeah, we have uh, the e-learning platform eCampus, robotics-ecampus.com. Uh, and there you can also um, review any webinar we do. Yeah, so this will be uploaded there so that it's available. And this will be from tomorrow on. Okay, so far so good. And uh, let's get started. And uh, before we um, open the software itself, I just want to show you how you can get contact and what is maybe also the background to this. Up to now, we have had always a different um, solution for the planning of our cameras. This was called Mobotics Creator. Yeah, but of course, we also got some feedback and uh, we have now since uh, um, a time now decided to work together with a new partner, with a new very professional partner. And this is a partner from the US. The company is called System Surveyor. And they have a product what is also called System Surveyor. And it's last but not least a, a very nice and easy to use planning tool. And it's not only for the planning, it's also um, actually for the, um, yeah, for the, work for working together with our customers yeah so a collaboration tool what you can use to show the results your planning results to the customers so it's everything what you need when it's about the planning and the start of the project so how can you get to it how can you open this how can you register for it if you go to the mobotics homepage, what we have here if you link to the first page you have, of course, the menu and on the services, we have there the trainings and the tools. And if you just move with your mouse over tools, then you see here the very first entry is Project Planner System Surveyor. Now, so if you click on to this, you come to a landing page. This is the landing page, what we have seen before. And on this landing page, you already get some more information. Yeah, and the next thing, thing what you can do there is you can click onto this button here. This is leading you directly to System Surveyor registration. So if I click onto this button, a new page opens, and this is now the System Surveyor homepage with the Mobotics landing page. Yeah, so and there you can see you can start a video to see what it's about. Yeah, but uh, we will do this anyway here in this webinar. Um, and then you can register for a free starter account. Yeah, and with this uh, possibility, you can already um, create your own account. And uh, yeah, like it's mentioned here, it's a free starter account. You can do your own plannings already with it. It already gives you a lot of opportunities. Yeah, so and uh, it's a really nice opportunity to learn about the system. Um, in the next steps, we can, um, of course, also download some things here. Yeah, so here is a link where we can download things. And there is a video how we can use this downloaded things. But I will also show you this here. Um, but before we do this, I want to give you um, some more information about the, the way uh, and how and, and, and what are actually the features in this free starter account. So what you can see here is uh, the information that if you log in from here and if you um, decide for a paid service, yeah, then you get a 10% off discount in the first year. Yeah, so this is actually if you come from this Mobotics landing page that you get it. And uh, 
the question is maybe what is actually the limitation of the starter account and what is the features what you get with the, with the other accounts and this we can see if we click onto the system surveyor link here yeah and uh, here we can see under the top line here is plans and pricing yeah and if you click onto this you have uh, the actually different plans available yeah and uh, for the system integrators who install cameras this is of course this here system integrators tile if you click onto the button then you see all the different um yeah the different possibilities you have yeah and you also see what are the features yeah what are coming with and uh, you can see that uh, with the free starter account you have already uh, the possibility to design an unlimited number of plannings yeah of projects yeah and uh, this is already um, a very nice thing and we can use or we can uh, actually plan 25 elements yeah this means uh, in a in a video security system you can plan up to 25 cameras yeah in the free version what is already a lot and in addition you can also um, add photos to it yeah this is limited to photos but this is for most of the cases also a very nice um, possibility of course you have more possibilities you have more features available if you decide for the other plans what are um, offered here um, like i have said if you decide uh, to do this you get a 10 percent discount in the first year um, as a robotics customer okay so far so good so let's assume we have uh, we have registered yeah we have a link and this is tied actually to our um email address yeah so what we need to know is actually the email address and our password so we can say log in here yeah, in the moment we do this um ah no it's already logged in from my let me just log out so that we can do this again log in so that we come to the login page and uh now we have to log in with our email address and password yeah so and what i want to show you first is this free account yeah so i have also a free account this is this account here and uh, we want to sign it for sign in from here so i click onto the sign in button yeah and then we come to the yeah to the dashboard first yeah where we see all our projects yeah and in the start there is uh, actually a sample site already in there yeah if you click onto the sample site you can see um yeah what was planned already there yeah so here is uh, an example what you could um yeah, let's say um, what you could see, what you where can play with, yeah, and you can also create your own uh, plannings within this site, yeah, or you go one step back, yeah, and say we want to create another, a new site. What we don't want in the moment, I just wanted to give you first a nice overview. In the next step, um, we want to, yeah, let's say customize this a little bit. Yeah, and therefore we go on to the profiles. You see here on the upper left corner, there is a symbol here. If you click onto the symbol, yeah, here you can select this button profile. So, and here under profile, we have first of all, here some uh, yeah, personal information where you see your name, yeah, where you see your company, and also a password can be changed. These things you could uh, upload an image, whatever. Yeah, so these are the the personal things. Um, and there we have then under settings another thing where we can say, okay, we want to adapt the units. Yeah, so it depends where you are coming from, what unit system is used. Of course, uh, if we talk about Europe, yeah, and uh, European other European countries and maybe. Um, all the countries what are using this metric system, we should use metric. Yeah, if it's a uh, imperial system, then you change when you change uh, or select this here. Um, in the moment, the software is only available in English language. Yeah, so we can't select the language. Yeah, but for most of the technical softwares, this is something what we are used to. Yeah, and uh, this should not be too problematic to. Um, work with this English interface. So far about this. Um, another very important uh, setting is element profile. Yeah, and here we uh, are coming now to the element profile 
um, entry and what we can see here that we have here a list of all the different systems that can be planned. Yeah, so this is not just only video surveillance. This is also access control system. This is also intrusion detection system. You can plan the whole infrastructure. Yeah, IT networks can be planned. Yeah, also fire alarm things. Yeah, so you have here with this tool a lot of opportunities to actually plan everything, not just one um, part of the system, but also all the uh, different systems so and if we look now on to one of and our of course our um part is now the video surveillance if we open this we can see that we have here some um yeah different camera types yeah you find here fixed cameras you find ptz cameras you find multi-lens cameras yeah so um all these uh, cameras are available and uh, you can also see here that there are already some cameras in there. Yeah, so if I click, for example, onto this PTZ camera, you can see that uh, here are Mobotics cameras behind us. Yeah, so we have here Mobotics SD340, Mobotics Move SD330, Mobotics Move SD230. So these are the different models. Yeah, and you have also some more information about these models within this table, yeah, including also our list prices. So there are some settings already done. So the question is, how, where does it come from? Yeah, and here, um, the thing with, with our element profiles comes into the game. If I go back to our Mobotics homepage, and let me just select again the English one, yeah, you can um, select under services, the download center and the marketing and documentation link yeah and if you scroll further down you find here our tie with catalog files and if you click onto this you come to a page where you can actually download all the different element profile files yeah so if you have a closer look you can see this is xls yeah so this means these are excel sheets yeah and these excel sheets are containing all the camera product information yeah so for the different cameras and what we have just seen was this ptz camera element profile yeah so this is containing these uh, three camera types with all the settings what we have seen yeah so in order to make them available in your account you need to download this so you can click to this it will be downloaded yeah and then we go back and say here that we want to import this file into our um into our system so i say um we have here our documents i have here my element profiles and i want to upload here this element profile here say open yeah this is now opening this file this excel file and uh it will be of course uh yeah checked if this is a valid file and if everything is right um you can see okay um it's updated and we have a lot of uh yeah cameras and accessories available in this case uh, the um, PTZ cameras are not so many, but if you look here, um, if we go back to our um, fixed cameras, we have more, or we have actually 123 cameras in there. Yeah, and uh, this is a lot, so you can see it here. Yeah, and we also have um, under the multi lens cameras 47 cameras there. Yeah, so this is actually something what you need to upload before to have it available then um, for your people. So this is a, a part of, uh, yeah, you can say preparation before you do your first plan. Okay, so far so good. And uh, the next steps, what I want to show you is something what uh, where we would like to start from scratch with a new planning. Yeah, but before I do this, I want to log out and I want to open my uh, full account because here I can show you all the different possibilities. So I say here, um, I use my Mobotics account, sign in. Yeah, in the Mobotics, in my Mobotics account, I have already um, uploaded all the element profiles what we have from our uh, page. And uh, here we have now a list of all the projects where we have done some planning so far. Yeah, so you can see that uh, there are uh, different uh, project names. Yeah, and uh, 
there are some surveys within there yeah and when they have been uh created so now let's assume we would have a complete new project yeah and we want to add this project now to our list yeah so in this case we say add site so and now the first thing is that we have to enter a name yeah so this is uh yeah actually mandatory that we have uh a project or a site name yeah let's say this is mobotics hq yeah so this is the example here mobotics hq there are also some other fields street address yeah so they are not mandatory um but of course you can enter the details here if you want then we can say create and now it's creating our site yeah of course the site is uh, empty and we have now to fill um the whole thing with life yeah and the um one thing is that of course you have a contact person in your project yeah so this is the guy who is maybe uh your contact who is answering all your questions yeah who is maybe also giving you the, the um the contract yeah so here we need to or we can of course we don't need to but we can enter um the contact yeah let's say we have uh, here the contact and we would say this is the um guy thomas let's say schwarz swartz in english yeah and also company title let's say here this is the um, the name, yeah, Thomas Schwartz at mobotics.com. Yeah, this should be the name. And we can invite this guy also as guests to our planning. Yeah, so this is just what I what I mean with uh, collaboration. We can invite our customers to our planning so that we can share it with him so that he can also have a look what we are doing. Yeah, and uh, maybe giving us his feedback. So uh, we don't do this in the moment. Yeah, we say just add, and then we see that um, our contacts are then here in this list, and we can use them later on to contact them. So, um, so this is one thing. Yeah, and the other thing is that we now want to create a new survey. Yeah, so uh, the project you can have, of course, uh, different phases in your project. This can be maybe the first phase where you do your first planning. Then you have maybe uh, the next phase where you have uh, a final planning. Yeah, and this means you can have multiple surveys here. And uh, this means we press this button "New Survey" in order to create a new one. And our opportunities, what we have here, is that we can upload different or that we can use different backgrounds for our planning. Yeah, so it could be that you have already got a file from your customer. Yeah, let's say he, he was giving you a, a floor plan. Yeah, this floor plan could be, yeah, so I have already here some examples. Yeah, this floor plan could be that you have actually some DWG files. Yeah, so these DWG files are actually files that are coming from uh, from AutoCAD, yeah. So this is uh, design and architect software, um, and they normally create this kind of files. These kind of files cannot be imported into our software, yeah. But what we can do is we can convert this. We can convert it into a PDF file, yeah. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities how to convert convert this. Yeah. So this can be done, for example, with Acrobat. This can be done with uh, third party. Uh, services in the internet. So I have used these uh, third party services to convert this DWG file of the villa into a PDF file of the villa. Yeah, so this is actually now my file, what I want to import. So, and if we go back into our page, into our um, yeah site where we can now upload and choose how to what we what we want to use as background i choose photo or pdf click onto this yeah and now i need to say what is the location of this file yeah so this is actually here and i say project of the villa and say open and this is now importing this pdf file and i have now a pdf file what has multiple pages yeah so of course, I'm only interested in, in one level in the moment. We just want to make a very simple one with one level. Yeah, so I say I just want to select this page here. Yeah, and then we go to the next uh, step. So I can say here on the upper right corner, click onto the next button. 
So it's now coming to the next step. And here we can again enter some more information about our project, about this special survey. Yeah, it's uh, here called survey one. Yeah, and we can maybe add something level one. Yeah, for example. Yeah, uh, all these uh, different uh, fields here are available to enter some more information. So, and uh, we can already see that we have on this one PDF page multiple drawings. Yeah, so this was actually coming from the DWG file. That there have been different levels. Yeah, and this was uh, yeah actually multiple uh, drawings. Yeah, but we only want to choose one. Yeah, so this means we need to crop and set scale. Therefore, I click on to this crop and set scale. Yeah, and we see now that we have now this blue frame around this. Yeah, and we just want to use one of the levels. So I want to use this here. So we need to fit this to our one level. So this is our level. So this is now done. So this would be the right one. We can click onto the checkbox here in the upper right corner in order to come to the next page. Yeah, and here we can see, uh, here it's mentioned what we shall do, set a distance reference for outer measurement. Yeah, the thing is we have now imported an image actually. Yeah, and uh, the system has no idea what are the dimensions, but we need the dimensions for the planning. Yeah, so therefore it makes sense to enter or to scale our drawing. Yeah, and therefore we can, um, first of all, zoom in. Yeah, this can be done with the mouse wheel. So if we zoom in, we can see it a little bit larger. Yeah, and now we have this, uh, yeah, this tool here, this red tool, and this red tool helps us to, um, yeah, to actually measure or, or or select a distance what we already know. Yeah, so in this case, I know that this floor here has, uh, yeah, a width of three meters. Yeah, so I select this tool, so like this. Yeah, and let's say so this is not like this here so 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 this is now actually our uh, our floor and uh, i need to say here set and set the units of measurement here we could again say it's uh, in feet or metric yeah in my case it's metric and i would say this here is now three meters this floor so let's say save yeah and this means we have now set a scale for our drawing so, and the next step is that we need to save this. It's now analyzing this uh, um, drawing. Yeah, it's now doing the scaling. Yeah, and in the next step, we have now this plan as a background for our planning. Again, with the mouse wheel, we can zoom in, we can zoom out. If you zoomed in with just uh, pushing the mouse, you can. Uh, yeah, pan and tilt, yeah, to see and to change the location. And now let's assume we want to place a camera into this room here. Um, you can see on the left side that we have here a list of all the different systems. Yeah, so this is again the same list what we have already seen in the element profiles. Yeah, for access control, intrusion detection. Yeah, so here could be elements. We have, of course, elements in the video surveillance. Yeah, so therefore I click onto this and I see that we have here some um, options. Yeah, what we can enter. This is fixed camera, PTZ camera, multi lens camera. Yeah, so a lot of different uh, possibilities. And uh, what I want to choose in, in the first uh, step is I want to enter a fixed camera. Yeah, so therefore we just need to drag and drop. Just click with the mouse onto the symbol, drag it into the drawing and release the mouse button when you are happy with the location. This is here. So um, you can see that we have now here um a different appearance yeah now it's something is coming up here we see this um yeah actually our um image angle yeah so this is actually the the angle what is covered by this camera this can be changed yeah so can you make this wider you can make it smaller yeah and with this symbol here we can change the distance yeah and the direction yeah so this can be done here 
So um, let's assume we would like to use now a camera, what is a hemispheric camera on the ceiling. Yeah, so this means we want to have the full coverage of the room. Yeah, let's say something like, like this. And uh, also we have a, a little gap here. We can see here on the right, um, there is a dialogue. This is this area of coverage, what gives us more information. And here we see 30, 359 degrees. Yeah, so this shall be 360. Yeah, and uh, if I do this, then it's closed. Yeah, so this is now um, actually the, um, yeah, fitting to the, to what we want. Yeah, we can um, also change some things here. Yeah, we can say we want to um, change the transparency of this. Yeah, so this could be done. We can change the color yeah, of this, uh, of this angle. And we have this camera advisor. Yeah, and the camera advisor gives us uh, a little bit more of information um, what we can see in the distance. In the distance, what was selected here. Yeah, and we have actually here our recognition criteria. Yeah, and these are coming from the standards. Yeah, so there is a standard existing what is defining these criteria. Yeah, and this is here recognition. Yeah, this means detection. Yeah, and here we get. Uh, yeah, a recommendation, what is the resolution in order to fulfill this criteria. So, and if we select here as general surveillance, yeah, say here we have a five megapixel or the requirement is five megapixel from the resolution. So if we are happy with it, we can say done. Yeah, so this means in this moment, these settings are done and we can again move the camera. Yeah, so this can be done um, when this dialog is not opened. So I can move the camera maybe to a central position here in the drawing. Um, if I just click onto the symbol, you can see that we have here some more opportunities what we can do. We can say, for example, again, coverage. Yeah, if we do this, we have the same dialog opened. Yeah, and we can also um, do the same things again if we want. Yeah, I just wanted to show that this is also available from here. We could, of course, delete the camera. We could, of course, duplicate the camera, but I do this later. Yeah, but we can also enter now some images, some photos. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's say, okay, um, we have maybe visited our customer. Yeah, and this is always our recommendation if you want to make a planning first visit the site with your customer together yeah and uh, maybe you have a tablet maybe you have your smartphone uh, on a tablet you can install the software also as an offline uh, version yeah so you can download um, on the um, apple ipad you can download the the app and can install it and then even if you don't have any connection to the internet you can uh, do the same planning things yeah and uh, of course with the tablet, you also have the opportunity to make photos, yeah, and then you can actually place photos here, yeah. But also, if you have other photos, so I want to do this now. Just let's click onto this, yeah, and see what images we have. Yeah, so there are some images available. Yeah, so I want to select this image here, and uh, of course, if you go to the site with the customer, it also makes sense to take a camera with you. Yeah, a camera, what is uh, connected maybe to a battery or what is maybe to some uh, some switch what you have with you Yeah, to make some reference images so that you have something what you can show the customer. Yeah, and uh, let's assume we would have this. Yeah, so we select this photo, say open. Yeah, and this is now opening this, uh, yeah, actually this, this photo we can yeah, just do some changes. Yeah, maybe say, okay, this is uh, our target, or this is maybe the place where we want to install the camera. So we could say, okay, we just want to mark the place where we want to install the camera. Yeah, so this is then uh, visible. Yeah, and if we are happy with this, and you can also put some text in here. Yeah, let's say here, um, this is the area, whatever. Yeah, so we, uh, whatever we want to, to place in here, we can do, yeah, and then we can say save and close, yeah, and then um, actually this photo was now added to our planning.
So, and uh, the other thing what we have not just discussed is attributes. If we click on to attributes, you can see that we have now uh, a window where we first of all see our photo. Yeah, but there is also a lot of other yeah, things. Yeah, we have some um, pages here where we can enter information. Also, here is something with accessories. Yeah, so there is a lot of things what we can set up here. Yeah, um, yeah, but in um, yeah, in a real case, we also want to say or we want to select the model of the camera now. Yeah, so and when we have uploaded our profile elements. Yeah, so um, we have, of course, entered them and we can select them. If we go to this drop down field here, here you can see now all the cameras what are coming within the element profiles of the fixed cameras due to the fact that we had selected a fixed camera. These are now all the camera models what are coming with fixed camera. So let's now assume we would like to use a hemispheric Q71 camera. Yeah, so this is here the Q71, or this could also be the C71. Yeah, so they are already in there. Yeah, so let's say we want to use the Q71. So I select it, and the moment I do this, it takes over all the settings of this camera. Yeah, so we have even here now a link. Yeah, so you can see here Q71 panoramic, and this link can be selected. Yeah, and it opens directly the product page and we can get, or the customer can get more information about it. Yeah, so um, here the product flyer, there is a video about this camera, yeah, so he has more information. Yeah, so in the moment where you share your planning with your customers, they can also do this. Yeah, so it's not just only an image, it's giving much more opportunities what you can do here. Of course, we could uh, change the name of the icon, yeah, if we are not happy with the standard names, yeah, and then we can also enter some more information. So we can say what is the, quant the quantity of cameras, yeah, here we have the device list price actually, yeah, and the, um, the area of coverage is actually here 360 degree. We have said we want to cover the whole room. Yeah, and uh, yeah, minimum and maximum angle is from 180 up to 360. So uh, we have also some other fields what we can, uh, where we can do some entries if we want. Yeah, so, um, but for the first moment, we are happy with it. Yeah, and we can say, okay, we want to use it. So we can just close this dialogue. Yeah, and now we have actually this camera planned onto this place. So um, also from the icon, you can see here's a photo yeah, coming with this um, plan. So now in the next step, we want to um, yeah, plan more cameras. Yeah? So let's say if I click onto it, I want to duplicate this. Yeah? I want to have the same thing, the same camera here on this room. Yeah? And again, we want to have it here in this room. Yeah? So we have it now three times the same camera. Yeah? So this should be... Uh, the first planning. And you can see this is very easy, very fast. So the thing is what uh, we can now in the in the next step, we can do some uh, yeah, some some additional settings. Yeah, so here we have actually here uh, some options where we can say, okay, what do we want to see? Yeah, what is actually here um, the status of the installation? Yeah, is this maybe still a proposal? Yeah, or is this already a project what was uh, realized and uh, everything is in place or it needs to be replaced? Everything what you can select here, it's just to, uh, yeah, to give you a little bit more possibilities to, uh, enter data here and with this here we can say um, that we can also here reset the scale replace the floor plan and we can also change the icon size yeah so this is what i have also have uh, a lot in uh, in the trainings that people are asking can i make the icon a little bit smaller yeah or a little bit bigger very easy just click on to minus to make it smaller then we can enter commands if we, if we press this button, commands to the uh, to the survey survey, yeah. Or we um, can also place again some information. If I click onto this, yeah, I can again put some elements onto the plan, put some uh, yeah 
character uh, yeah, characters here onto the plan. Yeah, if I want, um, if I'm happy with it, I just say save. So now the survey is saved. Yeah, and uh, we can do the next step. Yeah, so let's say this was our initial planning, our first step, and now I want to, um, yeah, I want to see what else is possible. I see that we have a question. Um, hi, Thomas. I got a question. Could you show us again? Where did you add the attributes of the camera with the URL link? Yeah, this was coming actually. Let me just show this. This was coming when I have selected the attributes. Yeah, and here under element profiles, this drop down field here, this is selecting the camera. Yeah, and if I select a certain camera, let's say this was now the Q71. Yeah, let's say it should be maybe. Uh, Let's let's use another camera. Uh, let's say um, maybe C16 or Q16. Here we have the C26, I26. Uh, let's say we, we we take this here. Yeah, uh, we take this uh, this camera here. Yeah. So then this camera is selected, and we have the respective URL. Yeah. So this is coming within this selection here that you have the right URL. Yeah. What you um, do not see is that uh, we have now not uh, images, yeah, because uh, the image are always related to a certain camera. So the uploaded photo is related to this camera. Yeah, they have not been copied. Yeah, so this was actually here the, uh, yeah, I think the answer to your question. Okay, um, yeah, so this was actually here, first of all, um, in the moment, our planning. So we say save, yeah, and maybe we keep this uh, camera model what we have now selected, yeah, and uh, we just save it. So, and the next step is we want to see what is now, what are our possibilities here. Yeah, so I can go back to the survey overview, yeah, and uh, yeah, if I'm happy with this, yeah, I can say, okay, now I want to, to share this with my customer. Yeah, so I can say here, this button gives us more information. Here we can say export data, import data, send a link. Yeah, and this is actually what we want. Yeah, then we can say, okay, I want to share this link with Thomas Schwarz or maybe with Thomas Gladel, yeah, whatever. So Thomas Gladel yeah, at robotics.com. Yeah, then we can select how long can he actually open this. Yeah, so we have to select a certain date and time. Yeah, so, so let's select this. Yeah, and we can also pass him a message and then we say send and then he will receive an email. Yeah, with an invitation to have a look onto this plan. Yeah, and this is a nice opportunity yeah, because like this, um, you don't have to send him a separate uh, mail with maybe some attachments or something. Yeah, so it's simple like that. So the next step is that we want to um, create reports. Yeah, and therefore we have here the button report. And if I do this, we come here to a selection of reports. There are classic reports, enhanced reports, Excel reports. Yeah, what I want to do first is I want to create a floor plan. Yeah, and therefore I select this. Yeah, and here we can also um, yeah, do some other selections, some filterings. Yeah, so um, we can rotate the plan, we can select the size. Yeah, let's use the setting what we have here and say, create PDF. So this was one. Yeah, so this was the floor plan. Then we can say we want to have the bill of material. Okay, let's do this. Bill of material, create PDF. So, and then let's have a photo tour. Okay, let's do this. Create PDF. Yeah, so this means we have now created some reports. The question is where do we find these reports? Yeah, they are available under created reports. If I click onto this, we come now to the list of reports what have been just created. Yeah, the first one was our floor plan. Yeah, if I want to open this, I click on to download, and then it's downloading this and opening it right away. Yeah, and we have a PDF file. Yeah, this PDF file shows us the planning. Yeah, and uh, if we want, we could send this to our customer. 
Yeah, so one of the purposes of these plannings is that you have, let's last but not least, uh, an, uh, a planning, a plan what you can forward to the customers. Yeah, and this is what we have here. So then we have said, okay, we want to have a bill of material. Yeah, so we could also select preview. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Yeah, it's uh, downloading and opening this. Yeah, and here we can see, aha, this is our bill of material. Yeah, we can see, aha, D26 one time, Q71 two times. Yeah, so this is the bill of material. Yeah, also here already as a list. Yeah, so this is also something that you can use um, and what you can forward also to the customer. And photo tour, yeah, do the same thing here. Of course, we have only uploaded one photo, but uh, of course, if you have more, more more cameras and with each camera photos, yeah, you would have here a complete list of all the photos. Yeah, you could say, okay, these are the photos what shows the installation uh, place. The other photos shows the view of the camera. Yeah, so all this can be in this uh, photo report, in this photo tour actually. Yeah, and uh, one other thing is what we can do is that we have here the Excel exports. If I click onto the Excel exports, yeah, I can say again, I want to have the bill of material. Yeah, let's select this and again, export. And uh, this is now creating this Excel export. And if we go again to create exports, you can see, uh -huh, here's our Excel export. And again, we can download this. Yeah, so this is now here downloaded so that we can open it. And you see, this is now a list of the materials. Yeah, and you have here manufacturer, you have the model, you have the quantity, you have the prices. Um, everything is here what we need. Yeah, so we can do with this uh, Excel export, we can do the first rough cost estimation. Yeah, on a very fast way. Yeah, we just have dragged and dropped the cameras onto the plan. This was everything, yeah. And with the reports, we have already the, the results. Okay. So far, um, about the the first basics. Now I want to show you an additional uh, example. Yeah, this example because this was now an inside planning. Let's do an outside planning. So we go back to our dashboard. Yeah, and let's say, okay, now we want to add a new survey. This was an indoor application. Now we want to create an outdoor application within, with the same project. Yeah, so we say new survey. This time we don't want to use a local resource. Here we want to use Google Maps. Yeah, therefore I click onto Google Maps. And of course, it's first starting with uh, the home position. Yeah, we want to allow our browser to use the local information. Yeah, so let's say allow, uh, and then it's uh, directly, yeah, hopping to the place where I'm currently. Yeah, and we see that we have here. Um, this is Mobotics headquarter actually already here. But if you do not allow this, yeah. And if you search a certain location, you can also say here in the upper right corner what you want to open. Yeah, let's say um, we could say Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Oper, uh, Oper Frankfurt. So here we are at the Opera House in Frankfurt if we want. Yeah, but we don't want to do this here. I want to change um, again to our place, say. Windweiler. So this is um, actually here the city. Yeah, our our headquarter is located here. So we can zoom in. This is Google Maps. Yeah, so like you know it with Google Maps, you just can zoom in. Yeah, make it uh, fitting to your screen in the size you want. Yeah, so this is actually our headquarter. Um, this is the the street where you come in. This is our entrance, our gate. Yeah, here's the parking area. Yeah, and let's assume we want to place a camera in the outside in front of the building to see what is going on in front of the building. Yeah, so this should be our, uh, let's say, uh, application. So um, this is now fitting. We can go to the next page. Yeah, and the nice thing is here that we don't need to crop and set, set the scale. Yeah, of course, maybe crop. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but scale is coming with Google Maps. Yeah, so we don't need to scale it. It's automatically scaled. 
So therefore, we just need to say now, save. It's now analyzing the image, yeah, getting all the information also about the scales. Yeah, and if everything works, it's now loading the resources, takes a little bit of time from here, and then opening the um, image to do the planning. Yeah, so here at this stage, I had sometimes a little bit of problem. It takes a little bit too long. Yeah, so maybe we have to go back and do it again, but uh, I double check. But in the meantime, let me just see. Um, Thomas, I was wondering if when doing the planning, how do we know what type of camera should we use? If we use, uh, if we should use dome, bullet, 360, is there a rule of thumb for it or it depends on the designer? Um, here I must tell you that of course it should you should have a certain product knowledge. Yeah, what are the products capable of? What are the the views? What are uh, the yeah yeah what are the features what the camera provide? Yeah, the thing is that of course in the first step you need to cover the field. Yeah, you need to cover the field where you want to see things. And this you can do with the, with the line of sight, what I showed in the beginning. Yeah, and uh, of course, the, the cameras, what we have, I want to come back later to it. Yeah, but uh, the cameras, they have a certain field of view. They have a certain image angle. Yeah, and this, if this is fitting to your, uh, to your area, what you want to cover, most of the time you have the right you have selected already the right camera. So um, here we are currently stuck, so we need to go back. And let me just go one step back because I know that th this was created, but um, yeah, somehow not opening. We can open this again from here, but here we are in the same thing. You we can see we have this survey now here. We can click onto this. So now it's opening it, yeah, and we are here in the same place. And uh, with my mouse wheel, I can zoom in again yeah, and uh, select the size what I want to use. Again, I can say here, edit survey. And hopefully we are coming now to the right page, yes. And uh, now again, let's enlarge this a bit. Yeah, and we can place now our camera. So and now this is actually what you have asked. How do I select the right camera? So I want to place now a camera to it. And this shall be a camera. What is, uh, again, a hemispheric camera, but covering here the front of the building so that you can see what is going on in front of the building. Yeah, so we're, therefore we select a fixed camera, yeah, place it to a certain position, yeah, do it like this. Um, yeah, so we can we can uh, live with that in the moment. Say done, yeah, and then we go again into our attributes and select the respective cameras. Yeah, and what I wanted to tell you is that here we see actually um, some more informations. We see the degrees. So this is actually what the camera covers. This field, what the camera covers. Yeah, and if we want to have uh, a 180 degree camera. Yeah, so then you should select one with 180 degree. Of course, you need to know uh, if this is an indoor camera, if this is an outdoor camera, this here is now an indoor camera. So what you need is a little bit of product knowledge. This is true. So um, let's say we want to have now this Q71 again for the outdoor area, Yeah, this hemispheric camera. So I select this here. Yeah, again, the same things. Now we want to add some images. Yeah, let's say, okay, this here is our building. Yeah, this is the entry, the entrance area. Yeah, so this is exactly where we want to place the camera. So this will be now imported. Yeah, so this is this here. And if we click onto this, yeah, we can say, okay, this is now our entrance area and we want to mount the camera onto one of the pillars. Yeah, so. I can mark it. Yeah, say so here, this shall be the place where I want to mark the uh, to to install the camera. Yeah, I could also add some uh, more information, also text if I want. I don't want this now. Say save and close. So and the next image um, I want to 
show this would be the view the view the side of the of the of the camera yeah so this is what the camera is showing yeah if we if we if we put it onto this place yeah so this is actually here the um the opportunity so everything what we wanted is already entered here and we can just close this close it so um the next thing what we need to do is of course we need to place it again yeah so let's say with coverage we can do this we can say okay this here is the right one yeah and what is of course not possible you cannot you cannot make the the thing smaller because here we have said it's an hemispheric camera so you can't make it smaller you can go up to 360 yeah if you look from uh if you would look from a ceiling down yeah but here we, if we put it onto the pillar yeah then we can uh we have it in wall installation mode yeah so this means we need to uh use the 180 degrees so now i want to have this element icon side element icon a little bit smaller okay yeah and on a different place this would be here so and now i want to add another camera yeah so this was now this uh this camera what is covering the whole area in front of the building yeah and coming back again to your question the first step if you want to make a planning is always a requirement analysis together with your customer yeah so this means you should meet your customer you should ask him what are the requirements yeah and like this you need of course also a little bit consult him yeah what is possible what is not possible what camera models are existing what are the capabilities of the cameras yeah and like this you get the information what you can use now to put the cameras onto the right place so we have now here our uh our gate yeah and on this gate we want to yeah let's say uh use a, we, we want to look with our camera from one of the poles what are placed here so here i have some poles yeah here is a pole we want to use a camera here on the pole to look at our gate yeah and here we decide for our multi-sensor cameras so we select a multi multi-lens camera let's do this take the multi-lens camera put it onto this place. Uh, and now you can see that we have now a camera with four image sensors. Yeah, so this is here an image sensor, uh, uh, a camera with four colors. Yeah, and for every area of coverage, AOC, we have one field. Yeah, and we can change the line of sight. We can change the viewing angle. Yeah, so this can be done for every of these four. Yeah, so, and of course, if you have an M73, you could have both, you can have two of them. Yeah, let's say we select uh, the green and the blue color. Yeah, so for the blue one, we would like to have an overview, let's say like this. Yeah, and the other one is looking more into the detail. So, and the yellow one is not, Robotic cameras have only two image sensors, not three, not four. Yeah, so therefore, we don't need three. We can just say none. Yeah, and also here, none. And then we have just these two cameras. So, and if we're happy with it, we can say done. Yeah, and put this onto the right position again. Yeah, this here was the pole. Maybe we make the icon a little bit smaller, like this. Yeah, and again, we can then. Um, select or correct here the line of sight or the viewing um, direction yeah so this is this here and for the other one also here we would have something like this here so well, this would be this one camera and of course we have not yet decided for the camera model yeah so i say done go again to attributes yeah and here we want to say what type of camera is it yeah and now we could say okay this is uh yeah let's say this is um the uh m73 with one sensor what is the 60 degree sensor yeah so this is now a 60 degree sensor we have already here the right link for the right camera we can enter again some uh some images i think i have an image for this um this would be the 
the, the view, yeah, what the camera sees if you if you put it onto onto this direction, onto this place, yeah. So this is looking to the gate, yeah, from this uh, from this pole, yeah. And uh, yeah, let's uh, use this setting here. Um, it was now selecting the blue angle as a 60 degree angle, and the other one also is 60 degree. Yeah, so here we want to change this. Yeah, so only one angle. Um, no, this was wrong. We want to go to our coverage. Yeah, and here I want to change the, the angle here. I uh, know the, the green one is the, is the locked one. So, and this is now, uh, in both cases, this is now locked to the 60 degrees. Yeah, so I can't change it here in the moment. No, yeah, because we have said, okay, it's a camera with 60 degrees. Yeah, of course, makes sense. Um, and then we can also say that we want to, um, that we want to add some uh, accessories to this camera and therefore we can go to attributes and to the accessories. Yeah, and the nice thing is we have already here now uh, for this camera, the, the camera model itself, yeah, with the 60 degree lens and with the respective sensor. But now we want to add things. Yeah, let's say add row. And if we want to add now accessories, we can say that we want to search for certain things. Yeah, and if I just uh, enter one uh, character, we can see already all the accessories what are uh, yeah, where we have an M in there, yeah, and you can see, uh -huh, IR illuminator, yeah, let's say we want to use an IR illuminator for this camera, maybe 45 degrees, yeah, and this is already now entered with the respective price, and then we can say, okay, and row, what else um, is available as accessory, yeah, let's say pole mount for the M73, very nice, pole mount is already in there. Yeah, so like this, we can enter on um, the accessories what we need for this camera. Yeah, so um, let me see if we can maybe add something else. Um, ceiling mount makes no sense. Um, TR sensor. Yeah, if we maybe want to add a TR sensor to it, we could we could we could do this. Yeah, uh, maybe audio module. Let me see if we see the audio module. Um, audio. Yeah, here we have the audio module. Yeah, so let's <clears throat> let's select the audio module. Yeah, so like this, we have now all these accessories selected yeah, and we can close now this dialog because the accessories are now selected. And if we do the same thing again, what we did before, we go to save. And then we, we select our Excel report. Yeah, we should see the camera next to all the accessory what we have selected. So let's go back to the report. Um, select Excel report, bill of material, export. Uh, it's now creating this export. We go to created export. Uh, so this is now our bill of material. We say download. Yeah, and here we can see all the material what we need. Yeah, so this is actually the camera. Yeah, these are the two cameras. These are the modules what we need. And we have, um, yeah, an estimation. We have the list prices already here um, as total price. Yeah, so this, of course, this is an Excel sheet. You can use this Excel sheet and modify it like you want. Yeah, so this can be done or this can be used for your further cal calculation. Yeah, or if you go back and create this bill of material import report here, this is also nice because it shows you all so all these uh, components. Yeah, you see um, here are the cameras yeah, and here are the accessories. Yeah, and for this camera, you have accessory A, B, C, D. Yeah, and the accessories A, B, C, D are these accessories. Yeah, so this is also something where you don't need to put it together for the customer. Yeah, with this report, you have everything together and you can just forward it like it is. Good, one hour is over. Yeah, and I think I have covered most of it. So, um, yeah. So, we actually 
um, yeah, have used the time to see two examples in indoor and in outdoor planning, yeah, how we can use the element profiles. And uh, yeah, I think with this knowledge, you should be able now to do your first steps. Yeah, so if you like it and uh, you can go the way like I did, yeah, start with the registration for it and then you can start to download these element profiles or maybe first plan without the element profiles, just do some drag and drop some cameras onto the places, yeah, select your, uh, your projects. And uh, if you like it, um, of course, would be nice if you use it, yeah, and if you maybe decide later on also for another version with all the features. Okay, so um, I want to say thank you for your attendance, for your attendance, yeah, thank you for your interest. I hope it was interesting. And uh, if you want to know something more, feel free to ask questions. Yeah, I'm very open for your question. If you send it by email, I will come back to you. Um, also afterwards, like I have said, it will be this, exactly this uh, webinar will be also on uh, eCampus so that you can uh, review this. If you are not sure anymore how this worked, how this worked, yeah, so then you can maybe look again to it. With this word, I want to say thank you. I want to wish you a nice, successful, healthy, and yeah, nice day. And hope to see you soon in another webinar. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.